G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru, welcome. There's my canvas size, and you will also see the colors going up the screen that I'm using. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you just what you can paint in acrylic, okay? So let's go. So I've got an area for me horizon about here, because that's where the colors are gonna change. We're gonna play with darks in this one. Now I wanna start with some craft white. There's no retarder in this craft white. I'm just simply using it to prime up the canvas. So I'll get this onto the whole canvas. I don't want it thick. What I'll do, I'll give this a bit of a spray. There's no colors on there. I would never do that if I already had colors on there. That's just gonna help this paint. There we go, slide across this canvas a bit better. But don't put too much water in it because that'll make your, your acrylic paints dry quicker as it's evaporating. So we're quickly getting the craft white on its own all over the canvas there. And now I just want to come to the tip of me, put her on a brush and stroke it nice and even and thin. All right, we're going for two colors here. I've got dioxine purple and Prussian blue, real dark colors. Um, Prussian blue, phalo blue, Sorry, not dioxin purple, Prussian blue and phalo blue. So we'll get the phalo blue up there. Ooh, he had a hard night. Now I wanna start off with the phalo blue at the top of the canvas there. Now that line we had as a horizon area, we're gonna bring this to that. So quickly, or not quickly, just, just get this on, crisscross it on, get it into that white come down to the horizon area. See it's coming a bit lighter, that's okay. Because that's gonna be the night mist, moonlit mist or something like that. Right across to that area there. Now I'm gonna to come to the tip of this brush and simply iron it out and get it to be a nice smooth value there like that. There we go. And I'm gonna pick up another brush just to put the Prussian blue on. Now I'm picking up the Prussian blue on another brush. And this is gonna start from the bottom of the canvas and come up to that horizon line area. So I'll start at the bottom, nice and dark. I might have to do a few passes of this because that's going a bit muted there. So I'll get that to that phalo blue. Not too bad, pick up some more, get it there, put some more on, get it there, that's it, because you want this nice and dark. We'll have to do it a few layers, but I'll show you the value that we're looking for. Now we've got it to that phalo blue, and we want to start transitioning that together. So I'm using the tip of the brush now to crisscross it up a bit, just so as it's not a line of the two colors together, it's gradiating within the painting. Okay, and I'm stroking it left and right again. Now, I'm gonna pick up the dioxine purple just so as we can get some darker values down the bottom there, some controlled darker values. This is a fun looking painting when it's in a frame. It'll have a wonderful vibe about it. Now, we're gonna control the darkness, so we want dark here, so we stamp that on, which is here, over here, stamping it on, coming across the bottom, it's nice and dark. These corners are dark. Now I'm simply gonna wipe this brush. Now we just wanna push this into that Prussian blue, like so, and get it dark down the very bottom. And we've created a nice darker vibe at the bottom there, just like that. So this is dry, it's still a little bit tacky here and there, but it's mainly dry so I can stamp on my other colors. So I've got myself a one inch brush and I want, what have we got up there? We got that, so I want some of this phalo blue because I want those sort of long type of trees in there. We'll get one, I don't know, we'll start over here. They're just subtle, you'll see them sitting on top of the Sky there coming down to that area and let it fading away to nothing there. 
I'm putting a little bit of dioxane purple with that because I feel they're too cartoony. There we go. I'll get that on. Oh, that's better. Just some subtle trees there. One there. Try and get them looking like trees. That one's a bit solid, I know, but it was my first one. It's like when you make pancakes, the first one's always a bit horrible looking. We'll get one a bit lower here. The main trees are there, coming right off the painting there. I want one a bit of a gap. Where's my line there? So a bit of a gap and one up here somewhere. Coming down to about there. Like I said, get those shrubs there. Coming across the horizon line, uh, right across here, we've got lower shrubs within the painting there. So I'm, I'm creating the tops of them. This is a simple, but it's a, it's a soft looking, I call it soft, they look soft. And when it's in a frame, it'll you can do this with any colour. I'm using the blues and purples, I suppose. There we go there. I'm just fixing this very first one I did because I don't like it. It looks so wrong. Okay, what I'm going to do next is grab the Prussian blue and mix that, what do we want, with some dioxine purple over here. Get I can get a hint of a road coming through the bottom of the painting. So from about here, this point here, and about here, because the house is going to be there, so I want the road about there. So this road is going to pretty much... I'll just lightly put it in for now, just so as you get a vibe of what's going on. It's going to go to about there. <laughs> A subtle road. Okay I'm grabbing the Prussian blue in my fan brush and I want it dark so I'm going to mix it with some black. So I want this sort of coming to the footpath there, bits of dark vibe coming to the to the road. You can just brush it on like this because this is going to have some mist in it so Pretty much just scratch that in, darken up that dioxine purple area. I don't like that blob there, I've got it. There we go. Leaving the other colour in between it from the bottom and against the road there. Bit of a darker value there, all the way up. Scratching out into the field there. Probably a dark vibe here somewhere, just very lightly. Grabbing the dioxine purple and I might need a little bit of white with that just to there we go and try and kill some of those big black areas down okay because you don't want it to look black I'm getting the phalo blue and I'm tinting it with some white to get the right value I'm just bringing it up to the canvas to see we're going to make some mist in the background before we put the house there so I'm just using a small little flat munted up brush. It's good for scrumbling and blending colours together and I'll use it for mist as well and fog and stuff like that. I'll start over here first just to see, get some of that off the brush because you want to come, see where these trees are and to the ground, this area here, we're going to mystify that. So you're pretty much coming along. See it's quite wet there and that wetness strokes you don't want so I'll get rid of that bulkness off there you want it looking fluffy and dry and powdery looking and you're coming down to the ground there this is just the mist coming all over the place so you want the air the edges of that nice I've dried the painting you need it dry for this otherwise it'll mud up we need this in to sit back when we put the house in because the house is going to be in front of this. So there we go, get the bottom 
missed it up a bit. So you're pretty much transitioning these shrubs into this colour. So you can't see, at the moment where I've got no fog, you can see where they're stopping and starting, but this is going to soften them up. Because this sort of painting, I like the vibe of these type of paintings. When it's finished, you'll see what I mean. They look soft, deep, soft, elegant, with a big punch to them. As you walk past it in the hallway, you, you just want to look at it because there's something about it. I'm just coming along this side here. I've come straight across the road there. Coming along this side here. There's not much on your brush. Make sure that it's dry because if it's not dry, that white craft paint, is that which is under everything, this will be digging it up. Now keep analysing your work. Take time to stop like I've just done there. Look at your fog. See where you're going. I'm liking it. I want it over here probably a little bit lower because, well that's a bit wet there. The house has got to be on top of this. Let's just see if we can get a bit fogulating up here somewhere in front of the tree. I'm going to step back a minute and just see if this is working. Yes, just, it's just working. So I've got like, I don't know, I'll hide some of this ugliness of this tree up. So I'm there. I'm coming in front. I'm going to have a band because sometimes fog lays on the landscape in bands just hovering on the ground there. So I'm just going to pretty much do a band all the way across here. See how much I've got in my brush? Not much, hey? Into the sky there, like so. It's just some kind of fog. I'm just using basic black paint here and I've got a flat brush and my dagger brush just so I can map in the house. And you want your house, there's, I want the bottom of the house about here, okay? Because I want some fog in front of it as well. And I want the corner of the house about here, about there, and the height of it somewhere up here, there, coming up to about that height there. And the length of it's going to come about to here, all right? So I'll map this in. Now, if you want a traceable for this house, there will be one in the description below, in the traceables link. Have a look below, I've got traceable link. Now this is gonna come all the way across pretty much, just like so. If you're doing it freehand, look how easy I'm doing this. It's just all shapes and squares and rectangles. And then we put on the little bits of triangle bits, let's say, we'll call them triangle bits. They're coming pretty much straight up. Here. There. There. And we can come past that a bit if we want. I'm gonna pick up the dagger brush that I talked about. There's a bit of the roof there, just about that low. There like so, over here. And we've got this coming in. A little bit blocked in. There's a little bit sticking out here. Grabbing some of the Prussian blue again, and I want to, because it's not going to stand out in front of that black too much, I want a little bit of white. I'll just grab some of that craft white. Just something, I'll put some over here. Just so we can create some shadowy areas on that black silhouetted house there. I've dried the house and I pretty much want, see this bit here? I want to come about, that roof's going to come down, so I want to come about there like that. Just to make up some. Something like that, all the way across to this side here. On an angle to that corner there, okay? So it's like it's set back. There we go, nothing too dark or too bright I mean. See from this line here, you wanna come across and get some of this just pulled down, coming down all the way down there. And I'm getting a little bit more white into that paint now, just a bit more, just to 
brighten up one side of the building which is about here don't make it too factory like just scratch it in there and maybe a bit through here oh yeah get it straight your dag just down there to make up for that I'm just grabbing the black again and about here I want a nice dark about that height right against that edge there I'm just using my dagger brush now to get more control and this is simply about that high and this wide just straight out there like that you can do this freehand it's very simple and this side here is just parabot wall there Make sure the structure's dry. I picked up some titanium white on a flat brush and I want a simple square window up here for the attic area. Now we need it white because they're not going to be white though. This is just a primer to get the yellow on there. When the yellow's there, your yellow will stand out. Some yellows are very see-through-y looking and this will make it not so see-through-y looking. And we got one about here. Go a little bit wider than that. Just down, not right to the floor. About there. And these flat brushes are great for blocking in stuff like this, I find. Now we'll give that a dry. Now I've got Indian yellow and some deep orange or red gold, okay? Because this colour on its own can be very see-through. I'll put a bit of white in there, it'll make it more intense. Look at that, beautiful. So here we go. This is going to stand out on the black now. Beautiful, look at that. Same on this one. All right, there's our yellow. Now we'll put a bit of burnt orange in there. Red gold. Mix it a bit, get it the vibe you want. I'm gonna use the dagger brush. So we'll get this, bit of white into that, there we go. And I pretty much want the top left area like this. The top and the left area just scrambled into that yellow like so. And I'll simply do the same to the bottom half. Cross the top, down the left, pull it in and let it scrumble and fade and blend into that Indian yellow, just like so. And when people look, see the lights on in this house, they're gonna go, I like that. Then we can dry it and put the window panes in Using my dagger brush, we'll simply come across the centre there and down the centre there. Now, come across here. We'll just put one across there like that. One there. This is a simple, effective way to get your nice lights on in your windows. And where else can we go? We'll come down the bottom here. One in the guts. And one on each side of the guts. And then we'll get one right across here. Try and keep them straight. And you can probably put some form of a shutter here. Don't have to, but I'm going to. 
Okay, now I've dried that because I just want to sit this down with a bit of mist using the same phthalo blue and a little bit of white. So get it the same value that you had before so it doesn't stick out oddly. See, that looks like it's floating on there now. So now we want to put some, some about here and get some mist sitting the front of this down. Got too much on my brush. Here we go, otherwise I'm going to destroy everything. But I need this sinking in our mist just at the front here like so. And you can do this principle with any trees on water, with the mist, just different colours. Just looking at it, there's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm just showing you because it's a tutorial. I've got to remember it's a tutorial. You can even get like some little bands of mist filtering over here somewhere, giving it that vibe of spookiness, but inquisitive. It makes you want to act like a cat and get in there and just see what's going on. So this one I'll do straight, half on the road a bit come out here doing it straight instead of bent and wavy. Now we'll finish it off with the lamp post. So we're getting the black and we're simply going to come from about here all the way up to here. So I'm going to try and work here. I've got my bullshit stick here. Let's see if we can get a straight line with me bullshit stick make sure your paint is inky enough so it's not going to break and we'll i'll try this side here i want a nice straight lamp post on a slight angle so i'll get the brush on its edge coming down the painting like that look at that now what i'll do is i'll grab some more same way i'll come a bit wider get the width that i want because lampposts are straight. They're not naturifiably crooked. Get rid of your bullshit stick. And now we can just block that in with some dark paint. Let's, I'm just using, like I said, black. Okay, that's nice. Nice lamppost there. Grabbing my dagger. Because what, what with this lamppost and these posts that I'm putting in now, these are what's adding the depth. We'll put a post here. And we'll get a couple running up this side of the track. One there, one here. Careful of the mist. One about here. And maybe something way back there. It's got like material or cloth on it here. because this is going to be highlighted with the blues and that. Get like a knot here, something like that. Whatever's on this one as well, going to the lamppost. Around the lamppost, coming down there like that. I pretty much want some bluey white, so I'll just use the phalo blue and mix a bit of white with it just to highlight what I just put on there. I have dried it, and we'll just get the simplest. Highlight on there. We'll get this side done. Is it coming across the top of that? Let's come from behind the post there. A little bit strung around the post. And a bit there. That's a bit better.
have a look at it, analyze it once you've highlighted it. If you've done too much highlighting, put, just simply put the darts back. Just over here, I've got some dioxane purple mixed with some black, and we'll just get the slightest trunkage going up here. I've just used the colour for the windows in there, the lights in the window to autograph it and then we'll whack a frame on it. So if you like this video, hit the like button, send me a comment, write a comment, tell me what you thought. I want to thank my patrons and my YouTube members who support me every month, much appreciated. If you're not a member and want to become a member and get the perks the members get, hit the join button below. And you can also become a patron, get early access to my content. All right, we'll whack the frame on there. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a beautiful painting with dark shades in it. And it looks all right in the frame, something I know you can do. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you enjoyed the show. You tell your friends if you like what you saw, but if you didn't, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.